Welcome to Getting to Know You, our first program in 2021. So it's Happy New Year to all of us. When I say getting to know you in introducing a program, I usually say uh, of residents and staff at Stonebridge. Well, today we have a program that's a little different because we have to say that the program is for residents and staff at Stonebridge. Uh, we have a special guest with us today, and her name is Barbara Preston, and you might not recognize the name, but if I say she's the editor of Montgomery News, you'll probably then say, oh, that's great, I'm glad that she's here. And uh, it's, it's part of sort of reminding us that as we go into the new year, that we live in a broader community than just the one we have here at Stonebridge, and that like many people will uh, be, uh, have seen some changes in the townships or actually the borough, Rocky Hill and Montgomery Township in the year ahead. So first of all, this is a chance to thank Barbara for her informative uh, publication and the only publication we could find that had all the information we needed about the candidates on the 2020 ballot. So thank you for your research and the way you laid it out. It was all up on a big bulletin board here. I saw so, that you yeah. did that, thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> that was really very, very helpful. And um, uh, I guess we also should say that breathing new life, as I understand it with Montgomery News, really puts you in a very small group of people because we hear a lot about local news declining or just fading away. And uh, you've managed to uh, sort of revitalize a, a wonderful local newspaper. Thank you. So thank you. So uh, I'm gonna ask Barbara just to uh, tell you something about herself and how she got into being the editor of this local newspaper when I do know she's had a lot of journalism experience. So Barbara, welcome. And what, what, what do we know about you? Well, first off, I'd like to thank uh, Ingrid Reed very much for inviting me. I'm delighted to get out of the house during COVID, <laughs> um, even if it is with this crazy mask. Um, I've always been a big fan of Ingrid Reed and <laughs> Marvin Reed. Um, I covered uh, Princeton Township it was my first job out of college. Um, I was a journalism major, had a wonderful journalism professor who inspired and motivated me uh, to do what I'm doing. And my first job was in Princeton, covering um, uh, some people who I came to admire, such as Ingrid and Marvin, and um, also Barbara Box Sigmund was a big influence and uh, her sister, Cokie Roberts. Uh, uh, they're, I mean, all of these people. So to be here with one of my role models is really exciting. Um, I also admire um, Ingrid Reed for her part with New Jersey Spotlight, which I think is just one of the best, um, now one of the best news organizations in New Jersey. Um, so, so thank you, I'm humbled uh, to be here with her. Um, what got me into community journalism, again, it's kind of funny, um, but I think that it was working for the Princeton Packet as my first job out of college. I was working there for oh, maybe four years, um, and I just learned so much living in Princeton. I come from a small uh, boardwalk town in South South Jersey called Wildwood. Which <laughs> has a roller coaster. It has lots of roller coasters and I went on the crazier the ride, the more I wanted to go on it. <laughs> and when I uh, came uh, north for college and I was living in Princeton, mm -hmm. I just saw a world that I never knew existed. I just didn't even know people went to a university like Princeton, to be honest with you. Um, so, I just learned a lot, I, just attending courses, and I loved writing for the Princeton Packet. It, I learned so much. I was a very, very curious person. And uh, I missed it. I, I, that was my first start. I also worked for the Atlantic City Press. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, I went to graduate school um, up in Syracuse and got a degree in education. Um, and I've worked for US One newspaper. I've worked for a lot of the local community papers. So you um, had an idea of how it could be done. So yeah, I knew I learned from a lot of Rich Ryan, mm -hmm. the editor of US One newspaper. Um, I uh, had uh, Pam Hirsch, 
who I learned from. She was my managing editor for many years at the Princeton Packet. Mm -hmm. And it's just something that I studied. Mm -hmm. I did it for a long time. And it was always community-based journalism. And I noticed that these papers don't exist anymore, at least not in the form that they used to. Uh, I know Princeton Packet is still around, mm -hmm. but we used to publish twice a week. Mm -hmm. We had a staff of at least 13 reporters. And uh, I was sorry to see what, was, what happened to local news, and I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. So that was the Montgomery News, because I don't think many of us sort of know the history. It was owned by someone else and was folding, is that right? Uh, the Montgomery News was sort of founded around uh, the 1970s mm -hmm. Um, by Frank Drift. Uh, he's a local in town. He used to run the rodeo. He's a farmer. Mm -hmm. um, from there, uh, it went through some different owners. Um, and then Cliff Moore, who is a photographer mm -hmm. and a very good photographer, bought the paper and he ran it for a long time. Mm -hmm. And he was ready to retire. Right. And I think that it's a really difficult job running a small paper. Um, especially print, and now we also, I think he was struggling with the website mm -hmm. because you become almost a daily newspaper yes. yeah. when you get into journalism today. Right. You have to do Facebook, uh, Instagram, I mean, just mm -hmm. constant posting. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can't wait a full month right. to give people news anymore. So I think that he was running ragged. And I think he was, he's retired now yeah. and enjoying the good life in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And he, so I used to, I, I, I'm just a reader, so mm -hmm. I, I was reading the paper. And there was a front page ad saying, paper for sale. And my daughter had just graduated college, mm -hmm. so I didn't have to worry about paying right. tuition. By the way, you live in Rocky Hill, right? I now live in Rocky <laughs> yeah. Hill, which is the same place where the previous editor lived. Yeah. He also lived in Rocky right. Hill. And before that, I lived in Princeton for, for many years. Um, but uh, when I saw the front page ad, I said to my husband, John, I said, John, I, I want to buy this paper. Uh, and he goes, we're not buying a newspaper. <laughs> are you crazy? Um, all the newspapers are going out of business. This is a really one of the worst ideas that I've, you know, yeah. <laughs> no way are we buying a newspaper. And I really wanted to, um, I got to know the editor a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but my husband was really, really against it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started looking for funding, mm -hmm. people who might want to own a community mm -hmm. paper. Mm -hmm. And there's not too many people out there who want to own a small community paper. So, um, so that when was that? Two years ago? Three years, Three ago, years ago. We just, this is actually, this is um, this is the Montgomery News. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually bought it, uh, I mean, I didn't buy it, but I, but I, I found a, An a publisher. An investor. A publisher. Yeah. He owns yeah. it. Yeah. But I run it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't tell me what to print, mm -hmm. how to print it, when to print mm -hmm. it. It's, so we're, well, maybe so that's a good, seg a good segue. You've gotten three years under your belt now, and you know you have a fan base, because I know people talking about it, and you have advertisers. We can tell that they're war. So what's ahead for 21? What's on your, two, 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 two yes. uh, so, 2000? Yes, so what's ahead? 21. Yeah. Um, what is really crazy is just how much news there has been in Montgomery. Um, in, in the world mm -hmm. these days. Mm -hmm. um, part of what's ahead, if I just um, look at the, the past is mm -hmm. prologue, yeah. right? So if I just go back, um, things really started going crazy this past May when George Floyd mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. was tragically killed. Yeah. Um, and so what's ahead for Montgomery is a lot of change. Uh, for one thing, the township committee flipped from all Republican to all Democrat. Montgomery is riding the blue wave. It, like I've never seen a town switch mm -hmm. the way that things are happening in Montgomery. Um, Montgomery elected their first 
African American school board president uh, just recently. And they also elected the vice president of the school board is also African American. Uh, mm -hmm. Two wonderful women, uh, Phyllis Birch and um, Zelda Spence Wallace. Mm -hmm. And these two women, um, it's a direct correlation to uh, the school board meetings, which had about three to 400 people in an office. Who has three to 400 people going to a school board yeah. meeting? It's typically I'm one of eight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And they all were demanding that history not be whitewashed. Mm -hmm. They wanted to know real history. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing. Right. I'm looking ahead to what these two very smart women, mm -hmm. very smart women are going to be doing mm -hmm. um, as head of the school board. And isn't there also a rather new superintendent as well? Or There's also a new superintendent. Um, she's, um, she's pretty traditional, but she, the great thing about her is she's open. And I think she has a really good working relationship with these women uh, who are, in fact, Zelda and Phyllis have tremendous support from the entire school board right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that you're going to see some interesting change happen in, in, her, in what is already a very good system. I think Montgomery It's is, one of the best, rated, yeah. I believe it's one of the best schools. Yeah. It has been rated one of the best schools in New Jersey. Uh, the kids there go on, they go where they want to go to school. And, and so the town the township committee also has new leadership. Yes. So the township committee, um, the change started when one Democrat was elected to the all Republican committee and her name was Sadaf Jaffer. So Sadaf is interesting. She's a professor at Princeton University, a, a postdoctorate, mm -hmm. I should say. Um, and her husband is a full professor um, at Princeton. Uh, but what's interesting about Sadaf is she's, she is a community builder and she's South Asian, um, she's South Asian Muslim. And she's the first, um, she's the first Muslim South Asian mayor in New Jersey and the first woman Muslim mayor in the country. And she is just very charismatic uh, it's possible that she may be, if Zwicker runs for the Senate. This is our assemblyman. Um, I, I should give a little um, notice ahead of time that um, uh, our, our local newsletter will be carrying an interview with, um, with Sadat uh, and thanking her for her service. And so people will be able to get to know her after the fact, but then they, she may be reappearing on the political screen. She may if, be. If she runs she's, for the general she's, assembly. She's very well liked in Montgomery. Um, very well liked, uh, and you know the demographics of Montgomery are changing. Mm -hmm. So we now have, I'd say about um, I think the census. I actually looked up some figures before I came here because when you're talking, it's so easy to give misinformation, right. I think. <laughs> and I certainly don't want to be giving misinformation. But uh, the, the demographics now in Montgomery, that's- So when the new census comes out, we'll probably be- I think you'll be very surprised yeah, yeah. when the new census comes out so, because you know, we're looking at about um, 36, 37% Asian. And, and Asian, but what about a total increase in population? That's even happening. The population is increasing. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of, there's about a thousand units of affordable housing coming in. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just the affordable units. Mm -hmm. And of course they get a density bonus of four units per mm -hmm. affordable. Mm -hmm. So we have um, the intersection of Route 518 mm -hmm. and Route 206. That is across, going, across from ShopRite. <laughs> across from ShopRite. You're gonna see some major changes. You are not going to recognize that intersection, right? Some uh, some big apartment buildings are going in, and also some super shopping centers. Yeah. If the retail ever recovers, yeah, really. Yeah. Um, and the schools right now are um, in the elementary schools. Uh, the board president would tell you that it's about seventy percent Asian. That's Chinese and South Asian. Mm -hmm. um, the high school is about maybe fifty-eight percent. Mm -hmm. 
So, so, so yeah. it's, it's growing. Yeah. And uh, I think that that's something that you're going to see a big change in Montgomery. Uh, and, and African Americans in Montgomery only make up about maybe 2.9% of the population, it's really low. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition to now having a, an African-American board president and vice president, uh, Montgomery Township Committee elected the first African-American committee member. It's kind of astounding mm -hmm. in some ways mm -hmm. that it's 2021 and it's only the first. Mm -hmm. And her name is Shelly Bell. Mm -hmm. She's being sworn in tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're taping this on a Wednesday, so on a Thursday night. Yes, so she will be sworn in tomorrow, and um, and uh, she's very supportive of, of um, uh, if we go back to the schools, with all the students, you know, and the parents and the teachers, the three, 400 people who are going to school board meetings, they want history taught right. Mm -hmm. This is all a reaction, not just to the changing demographics, but to the social and civic unrest that's happening mm -hmm. in our country right now. Mm -hmm. I think people saw that video mm -hmm. and it, it just really ignited mm -hmm. this town. And it's exciting to see, very exciting to, to watch and to report on this. But I just wanted to tie it into the fact that Montgomery Township has one of the few African American museums in the state. And, and you know, we, we know about that here at Stonebridge. We have met the two women who were the leaders and we're so glad Elaine to see them in, uh, in, in the uh, New York Times. Yes. I, I, we should have put that up on the bulletin board. Yes, yes. yes. And, and so, so what they are uncovering is that um, there's actually a history uh, of uh, African, you know, slaves mm -hmm. who were brought here by the Dutch settlers, mm -hmm. and nobody ever really talks about this. Mm -hmm. um, the Dutch reformed churches in town, the uh, the Blomberg, the be very beautiful Blomberg Dutch reformed church. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the second floor had the, the slaves mm -hmm. were forced to go there. Mm -hmm. And so if you really look at these things, uh, I think there's tremendous amount of change and that, that's some of the stuff. And, and I, I think looking back on the um, 2018 election when Tom Malinowski was uh, elected, and what they were describing about what we're all talking about right now about Georgia, the, the kind of campaign that was run in Georgia of being very engaged with people was very similar to what happened here in, in 2018. So uh, you could say Montgomery had a new kind of would you say activism going on before all of these changes? Uh, I, I, you know, I think that Montgomery is very much at the forefront. It's a very wealthy town. Mm -hmm. The median household income is around 200,000 a year. Mm -hmm. It's very, very wealthy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the second wealthiest town in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And that's where population's over 10,000. Right. Very, but not only do they have income, mm -hmm. they're, very highly educated. Mm -hmm. uh, I always like to tell people not to forget about Rocky Hill because Rocky Hill has more eight PhDs per capita, <laughs> <laughs> but also Montgomery has, um, you know, something like fifty-five percent of the people in Montgomery have uh, adults have uh, graduate degrees. Right. Yeah. So, so I think that they watch this and they want change mm -hmm. and they want to be at the forefront. Right. Of these things. Another thing that, did, that we read about in your paper is the new Montgomery Town Hall and many people here have not even known where the town hall was except they went to take their ballot to the drop box and it was pretty clear that Montgomery probably needed something new in the way of a municipal building when you got there. So that will open this year or will it take another year, Barbara, before I think that? It's, I think that they're saying that it's going to be at least a year mm -hmm. to build it. Yeah. Construction has begun. Right. Yeah. Uh, and um, I guess what people were worried about um, here and in Rocky Hill was losing the library, but I guess that's been resolved? Well. For Rocky Hill is a town of about 650 people. Montgomery has, what, 21,000? Mm -hmm. 
Montgomery does not, and it has much more political clout. Uh, they're working with Somerset County. Mm -hmm. They together have purchased a beautiful piece of land and it's gonna be a brand new library. Mm -hmm. Only a mile away from the former library, uh, which is also a beautiful library. And so it's, it's, it is Rocky Hill's loss. A lot of people on Rocky Hill are very upset mm -hmm. to see a library in the, the, the center of our town. Yeah. And we still have a walkable town. I, I walk to my hairdresser. Mm -hmm. I walk to, used to walk, still walk to the library for now. But um, Rocky Hill's going to have to get creative mm -hmm. and decide what to do with that space. Mm -hmm. A benefactor left it, you know. Uh, yeah. It, he, he built that building in honor of his wife, mm -hmm. Mary Jacobs. Mm -hmm. Library thing. Yeah. So, so you think there's going to be more development even as there's more diversity in Montgomery <laughs> with the potential shopping center and more housing. And uh, uh, I guess the other third part is protecting the open space or acquiring even more because this area is really known as a wonderful place to walk. Uh, I, I have to hand it to both the Republicans and the Democrats mm -hmm. on preserving open mm -hmm. space. Montgomery does a tremendous job of, of they've served, mm -hmm. I, I think something like 45% of the land is preserved right now. And it is a rural farmland community, so this And, and we, ben, we here at Stonebridge benefit from that and need to thank Montgomery, but I think Montgomery also need to thank us. <laughs> because a lot of people come here and walk on the path. Stonebridge really is a good. perfect example of a development that has, uh, I go walking here, we have tremendous walking paths, and uh, we love Stonebridge. Well, thank you, <laughs> thank, you. Really thank you, that's a good place to stop, and uh, we'll be watching the paper for uh, these new events, but thank you for giving us some insight into both the town and what we're likely to see, and, in 2021 and we want to cheer you on. I know you brought some copies over today and uh, uh, I think Jock, who's our videographer here, would testify that those papers are snapped up when they arrive here. <laughs> so we thank you very much. And well, so this is <laughs> yeah, this was a good way to start the new year. We know a little bit more about what's around us and uh, stay tuned as we continue to celebrate the new year all month long. I'm Ingrid Reed, I'm your host, Jack McFarlane is our videographer, and Jeff Tiener is our executive producer and advisor. So thank you so much, Barbara Preston, editor of Montgomery News. We're glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me.